Do you want to know more about the jazz program at Furman? Well, then you've come to the right place. You will hear doctors Matt Olson and Steve Watson provide insight on what the program has to offer. small liberal arts college like Furman, uh, the opportunity to have a big band and several combos, the opportunity to study improvisation in a class, to study it privately um, with um, professional musicians like me and our adjuncts. Um, <clears throat> I think that's a, that's a very unique thing that not a lot of other schools are able to provide at the, quite at the level that I think that we are. The one thing that makes the Furman Jazz Studies program unique over other universities that offer jazz studies is the ability to t uh, get students from all aspects of the campus, all majors are, if they can play and if they're interested in studying jazz, they have the uh, ability to come and register for these classes. And that does not happen at many universities, especially at the jazz studies level that happens here at Furman. Present five concerts a year, three with the big band and then two combo recitals. Um, those are always CLP um, concerts, um, and once a year we bring a guest artist in. This spring we're going to have um, a trombonist down from Tennessee named Rick Simmerly. He's an awesome trombone player, and that's going to be that'll be a lot of fun. There's an organization in town called the Greenville Jazz Collective. They have um, a big band concert or big band gig um, the third Wednesday of every month at Jacora Alley, which is a cool little restaurant and bar um, in the West End on Main Street. <clears throat> um, and the first Wednesday of the month, they have a jam session, and so that's open to people to come to play. All you have to do is know a tune or two um, and bring your instrument and play. You could play. Uh, you should play. Uh, Dr. Olson has set up a really great uh, visiting artist uh, series that he's been able to fund through different sources at the school. I mean, we've had uh, the, one of the uh, Marsalis brothers here. We've had um, uh, drummers, Bob Moses, that played with Pat Metheny. We had Joel Fromm. We've had all kinds of different, mainly a lot of New York City jazz musicians who come down here, give clinics, and give um, concerts. And for Furman to be able to host something like that is, is really a great thing that I don't think it's well known, not enough around this, this city that, that this is going on, although it's publicized. Uh, we need to maybe do a little bit better job in getting the general community out. Students who are non-majors and who may not be involved in the music department you know, on, a, 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 on the same level that our music majors are, may not be aware that um, there are opportunities for them to participate. Um, our combos are open to audition. Um, as you know, we have um, lots of the people in combos are non-majors. Um, my improvisation class has a prerequisite of permission of instructor. I offer that in the spring. It's Music 350. Uh, open to anybody. All anybody has to do is reach out to me. Um, we're always looking to include students from all throughout campus um, in the course in the stuff that we offer. These courses we've got adjunct instruction in jazz piano, jazz guitar, jazz bass, jazz drum set, and you know those lessons are available by audition. Um, Again, just to prove that you have a minimum competency on those instruments. <clears throat> and the faculty member has to have room in their teaching load to be able to do it. But, um, but we're always happy to have students participating. What it takes to become a great jazz musician means that you are uh, able to be flexible in all genres. If you study the harmony and the rhythms of jazz, then playing other kinds of music actually becomes a lot easier. It's worth it. You know, it's worth it to go hear some music that's, that's creative and interesting.